<laughs> Seriously. Sandag has granted a fleet of vehicles to the St. Madeline Sophie Center to help with its transportation needs. And Francella has been there all morning long in El Cajon with more on this. Hi, Francella. Hey, good morning, Carlos Lauren. Yes, it is so exciting to be here. Uh, they are holding a reception to celebrate uh, the 11 vehicles that Sandag is actually donating to them. And how great is that? I mean, this is a, such an amazing place. They actually uh, give services to over 400 San Diegans uh, that uh, have developmental disabilities. And I'm telling you, they have a wide range of programs for uh, the students that come here. And so I wanted to introduce you to Colleen Clemenson. Good Good morning. She's from Sandag. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh, d the donation that you've given to uh, this great nonprofit organization. I mean, really, they make a world of a difference for the students and the community. What actually, uh, what was the reason why you guys decided to donate, uh, invest in, uh, in this organization? Well, you're right. This is a great opportunity. And Sandag is a regional transportation planning agency. We plan and build public. Transit. We plan and build highways and bikeways, but those traditional forms of transportation don't always serve all the San Diego residents. And so here, partnering with Sophie Center through a grant program that Sandag offers, we were able to provide these 11 vans that help bring these 400 students into the community, be participating with one another, and gives them mobility. Yeah, it gives them a chance to succeed, uh, to reach their maximum potential, to grow, to learn life skills and job skills. I think it's wonderful. You you were mentioning earlier that uh, you guys have a, a grants available every two years. So now the grant is available right now. So anybody that wants to apply, uh, tell me a little bit about that. Who can apply? What is the protocol to apply for this uh, for a grant from you guys? So the grant program is a specialized transportation grant program. So again, it's emphasizing access and mobility for older adults, seniors, and pe people with disabilities and nonprofit organizations like St. Madeline's, um, local government organizations can also apply. We have $7 million available, and not only can the grant funds be used to purchase vehicles, but they can also be used to run programs. We have volunteer driver programs that take seniors to medical appointments, shopping, help them do their shopping, take them home, and actually help them unload their groceries. And then the third part of the program is also just to coordinate rides, so those who cannot access traditional forms of transportation can call in and get assistance on rides that could help serve them to the places that they need to go. And it's really all about making sure that San Diego residents have mobility, can get the places they need to go, and that we're not leaving vulnerable communities like older adults and persons with disabilities out of being part of our community. That is wonderful that you guys do such an amazing job for San Diegans, for our community, and for people that just really need it. Uh, so if anybody's interested to apply, just go to your website. Yes. Sandag.org. We will be hosting a workshop um, in August, and we will also be asking for applications, which are due in October, and funding should become available in mid-spring next year. Well, thank you. It is heartwarming to see uh, that you guys are doing such an amazing job uh, for this organization, for Sophie Center. How hot is it for you? Is it hot enough yet? It's hot enough. Yes, yes, are yes. Are you sweating bullets yet? Because I know I am. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. It's about 76 uh, to 80 degrees right now. Let's take a look at your seven-day forecast because, Colleen, it's going to get pretty toasty. I know you're a little red right now. Go on, go on to the shade so you get some water and a little bit of a, uh, a cool down. But it is going to get hot. We're going to have the same ridge of high pressure. I mean, it's been this bubble of high pressure that's been, been so dominant. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Uh, so we're going to continue to have temperatures well above average. Uh, we're also going to have a chance for some thunderstorms over the mountains and deserts um, for the afternoon hours in the mountains again and the deserts, maybe even some lightning, heavy rain and uh, hail at times. So let's uh, take a look at coastal areas are going to remain in the low 80s. There's not going to be a huge fluctuation in the temperatures. We're going to cool down just a touch Saturday and Sunday. So the coolest day, Colleen, if you have plans, will be Saturday and especially Sunday for the valleys. We're going to be uh, right around 96 today. That's the average, 96. Uh -huh. Wow. And then factor the humidity, so uh, about 100, I think. 94 on Wednesday and then we're going to remain right around 94 
for Saturday and Sunday. The mountains were 88 with that 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms this afternoon and especially for tomorrow. And for the deserts, 109. How do you like that? Well, good 108. The fans have air conditioning. Huh? No, that, vehicles have that is important. So the students are going to be like enjoying the, their zone, their cool zone. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, I'm telling you, when I, when I, my, I don't have AC at home. So when I, when I get to in my car in the morning, my cool zone is my car. And then when I get to work, <laughs> a lot of San Diegans don't have AC. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, yes, Pauline. It was, a, it was so much fun talking to you. And again, congratulations. It's a blessing that you guys are doing this for our community. I'm going to toss it back, Carlos Lauren, to the studio because I am melting. <laughs> yeah. You go, you go get in some air conditioning, too. Have oh, a cool that's day. great. Well, yeah. What a wonderful thing they're doing there <laughs> at St. Matthew.